Live once again from San Jose, California, from the studio in this converted bedroom. Welcome. Here come some folks. Uh, do say hi in the chat. Don't be shy. And where you're from. It's always fun to see where folks are around the world. Let me know if you can, if there are any problems with like what you hear or see. But say hello. Let's get this rolling. How's everybody doing? It's been a while. Sorry, my Saturdays have been busy. Hello, Bit Invent. Welcome. My Saturdays, my Saturdays have been busy, um, either with I don't know. There's just stuff going on, um, which is kind of refreshing. Hossein Walid from Bangladesh. Welcome. We have some new folks on here. I don't, if you've been around, I don't recognize you. So, um, uh, glad to have you. Anybody else want to chime in and say hello? And I don't know what, uh, I, th I think rather than, uh, you're bitten vent from Sri Lanka. Dang. I'm glad to have folks from around the world. Really excited. Hope to show you some good test-driven development for the next hour. Actually, maybe it won't be good, but that's part of the process, is making it good. It's not, it doesn't necessarily come out good right away, um, but it's the process of, of doing it, making it better. And here I am, I've been doing test-driven development for 20 years, and I feel like it's, I'm still improving, I'm still learning. It's a funny thing because the rules are so simple. I don't know. It's kind of like, um, uh, you know, the, the board game Othello. Uh, let's maybe I can bring it up. Othello game. Here, I'll switch so you can see. This game. Very simple rules, uh, and their their tagline was uh, like "Learn it in a minute, uh, master it in a lifetime." That's not quite right. I'm getting it wrong, but uh, something like that. And test driven development is like that. Super simple rules, very nuanced execution, a ton to keep learning. Glad to have you here. Um, Let's see. I I want to see. I've had a little few problems with my overhead, so let's see if this still is live. Ah, it's not live. Hang on. I'm gonna try to reset it. There. Now you can see. Hopefully, y'all can see that. Hey, Anibalcito. Good to have you back. Okay. Where we were, I'm, I'm not going to explain the whole context, but um, kind of like, you know, just enough. If, if this were a mobbing session, uh, you would be in here. By the way, um, uh, I haven't done a pub mob in a while, but if you go to, uh, that's not it, pubmob.com. Um, there will be, uh, I, I'm going to try to get back into this. It's been a while, th but there will be sessions where, um, it's actual mobbing or ensemble programming where you are the ones doing the coding and I'm just sort of talking you through and coaching. Um, so we can't do that this time. It's just going to be me, but let me try to give you some context as if you were joining, uh, the problem, uh, midway through. Hopefully, oh darn it, my it's not updating. If hopefully, uh, you can see 
my hand. Yeah, I'm I'm seeing it in my little monitor here. All right. Stay. <laughs> okay. So what um what I have, what I'm trying to do is take some answers of what things um what people are interested in learning about uh unit testing and test driven development on iOS. And it might be some things like I want to learn uh say UI kit or I want to learn how to do this for Swift UI. Okay. Uh, that seems to be looking all right. Um, and their weight, the weight of their interest um, is, let's say, very interested, eight. And then there's somebody else who's like, I'm kind of interested. And maybe they're interested in Swift UI and combine. What I want to do is add these, add up the values so that we get for, for UIKit, the interest is eight. Uh, for combine, the interest is five. But for Swift UI, I'm just making this up, the interest is what is that? 13? <laughs> 8 plus 5. So we want to accumulate the weights. Um, and, and this will give me basically a scored uh, interest rating. Ah, and we have Alfredo. <laughs> Alfredo HDZ Dev. Good to have you. So that's uh, still live. Okay. This is what I want to work on. And now let's um, let's go to the code because I'll show you where where things are so far. And. In test-driven development, a normal trick taught by uh, uh, James Grenning uh, is zombies, actually. It's the Z-O-M of zombies. Um, you start with zero. Like, how, does it handle empty? And then, then you do one. That's the O. And then many. That's the M. So what I've done, I, I didn't really start with zero because... Um, once this is working, I'm not, a, I can't just query for like, you know, random, uh, topic of interest. I'm going to actually walk through, uh, this list and say, you know, look things up. So, so there will be no entries that are zero entries, but there will be, a. we did start with one. So here. In this test, and I think I may update um, these names a bit. Because this is an accumulator, so it's going to accumulate. So why am I saying accumulate in the test? That's, uh, that's pointless. Let me just fix this up. One entry. Here's, so in the case, for the one entry case, it's like um, there's a, the, the topic is P1, the weight is 8, and that's what we should get out. If we say, what's the score of P1? 8. Great. What's the score uh, if it's uh, 5? 5. Here, I am actually going to change this around. I want to say, actually, maybe it's okay. So the, the, we've got a score of five, but I'm asking about something else, P2. And in this case, it happens not to exist. So, um, but uh, basically I want to make sure that I don't get five back, right? So 
in a sense, it's working for the one case where um, there's only one entry in this array. So that's the that's the one case. The 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 Z O M. It's the O. And so I did some. I did some uh, renaming just now. So let me commit that. I've made a change, so I'm going to commit it. And I'm going to commit it following this notation to describe how what the risk is of this change. And this is a test-only change. Uh, simplify test names. And commit that. Okay. Uh, let's see. There was something else I wanted to show you. Oh, there was something else I wanted to do for myself, um, which is a thing you can do. I'm not using Xcode, as you can see. I'm using app code. I want to add colored scope called tests, where the pattern is... I think unknown scope. Maybe I won't do this right now. It's it's not relevant to DDD, but uh, it's a it's something I want. I want to color code the tests so they stand out. I'll do that on my own because that's not probably not what you're here for. Um, or maybe at the end. All right, so we have. The one entry case now. So let now, if I look at the the code, you can see all we have is a single entry. It takes an entry and it shoves it in, and it's optional. It's either there or it's not. This is obviously not what we want when we want to accumulate many entries. But this is how TDD works. You start with you keep the code basically minimalistic, and we don't let the code race ahead of the tests. Right now, the tests are only asking for one entry. So this code is correct. It's incomplete, but it's not wrong. And to the extent that you look at this and say, but this isn't what we want, that feeling you need to turn into another test. That feeling is telling you there are more tests to come. By the way, do stop uh, or do chat if you have any questions about what's going on or what I'm doing or, um, or about uh, test-driven development. I'd be, I'm happy to stop. I'm just rambling because we're not in a room together. We're not like in a Zoom call like we would be on PubMob. So let's do two entries. Let's, uh, I, I want to get sort of what's expressed in the whiteboard down there, even though it's no longer updating, that's okay. Um, and I've, here's, here's how I put it in, in comments, which is a fine way to do it in code. So this is kind of what I want to do. But let's start with, I'm just going to copy this and do like two entries. And let's see if we can code this up. Twee, two. Two entries. So here's entry. Let's uh, rename this to entry one. And this will be entry two with a different weight, but the same exact uh, problem set or in the problems of interest and let's accumulate entry one and entry two and when we score that i expect a score of i'm gonna i'm gonna go like this just so it i was normally um you put in literals in tests but in this case I want, I want it to really show 
that by looking at it, that um, uh, let me turn off the white uh, the whiteboard there. Let's see if that updates. There we go. Um, I, I I want it to be clear when you when you look at this that the, there's an eight um, up up here. And here's an eight down here, and here's a five, and here's a five. So you can see the relationship. Um, the rest of this I might clean up later, but we're not there yet. So here's our first uh, new test. And I'm going to run all my tests, and I expect this one to fail. This is an important thing about test-driven development is call the shot. Call the shot. It's like in baseball. It's like the... Um, the batter saying, I'm going to hit this over third base. And it, uh, it's, it's like that. Calling the shot is important because there are times when you want a test to fail. And there are times when you want a test to pass. And when there's a surprise either way, that's important information. So I expect this to fail. And it does. Good. If you're new to test-driven development, it might be weird to hear me say, it fails, good, celebrate it. Because in test-driven development, uh, as you may know, we start from failing and we go to passing. That's the first step, red to green. So now we're going to do the simplest thing to get this to pass. And what might that be? Well, this is no longer going to work. We know we can't have just a single optional entry that's either there or not. So it's the zero and the one case. We're now going to the many. So I know this isn't going to work. I need to change this to an array. But I want to do this in the safest way possible. I want to keep my safety net alive. I want don't want to be broken. I don't want anything to fail. And I so the naive thing to do is to just start coding and say, well, let's just start doing this. And um, uh, this is going to start like you know, as an empty array and it's going to accumulate and da, 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 da. Don't do that. Don't do that. There we go. Instead, we want to make this change. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually skip this test, or I'm going to disable this for now. Because we're going to come back to it. But I want to make changes that don't break the other tests. OK, so that's, that's fine. That test is, as you can see, it's skipped. Uh, this. Um, shortcut I used, by the way, you can get from my code snippets by going to qualitycoding.org. And clicking that button, get code snippets, or um, fill in your email here. And you can get code snippets. I'm using app code, but I have code snippets for Xcode also that make this fast and easy. Okay, so now let's see if I can't change this to an array without breaking things. How to do this? And I think what I need to do, th this is still going to take a single entry. So I'm not going to change that. But I do need to change this. And when I change that, I need to now let's just start. So now let's start it as an empty array. And this is going to be a pinned entry. And this is going to take the first.
There we go. Uh, wow, I'm getting uncomfortable because I'm 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 broken for so long. This is the thing I said I wanted to avoid. Is there a way to better way to do this? I I I'm just I'm uncomfortable, so I'm going to follow my feeling right now and say, let's roll back everything in there and let's start over. Let's just make sure. Whoops. I thought I... Oh, darn it. I rolled back the tests instead of the uh, the production code. Uh, that's all right. Let's uh, let's see if we can get it from. Uh, there's a there's a a tool for this. Um, 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 um. If you know what it is, I'd appreciate a chat. Uh, about where do I find the local history? Not the I didn't commit it, so it's not in my Git history. But shoot, where, 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 where? I mean, I I can just do it again, but I hate losing that. What a dummy! See, I told you this wasn't going to be a professional job. Um, well, I know I want to reset this. So I may as well reset. Uh, uh, ro roll that back. Now, if I could just get those changes back in here, I'd be happy. Where are they? Hang on a second. Um, now, this is not IntelliJ, but most of like the helps out there are, are for IntelliJ because it's the same underlying IDE. Local history. See, that's what I want. I mean, it, it might be there in app code uh, as well, but and it probably is, but let's... I mean, the documentation. But usually most people... Like here, I got to the uh, the JetBrains documentation, which is good. But sometimes you want to see like what other people have written. You can just look up stuff for IntelliJ and see what what it is. Let's see. Right click, local history, show history. Okay. Let's see if we can do this. Local history, show history. Oh come on! It didn't save it. I messed up. Okay. Start over. That's not a bad thing. And because I didn't get very far, I don't have very much to, to repeat. Oh, it's, it wasn't that one. It was this one. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Uh, that's what I want. I want to bring this back into play. Ta-da! There. Phew! It worked! Thank you, app code. Hello, Tyrannosaur. All right. So, I saved myself. I, um, I had reverted the wrong thing. Um, and it wasn't committed, but thanks to app code, um, uh, it, it kept local history. Um, BitInvent says, uh, app code seems awesome. Too bad. It's kind of expensive. You, yeah. Xcode is free, but consider the price of your time. And, uh, you can, Obviously, since it's a, a paid product, you don't want to just throw down money um, just because I tell you it's awesome. You want to try it, and it does have a trial option. Uh, the latest version just came out of beta, 
But uh, one thing you can do when it when they open the next beta, or they call it the EAP, um, is use that because that for that you don't need a license. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that you don't need a license to use the the beta release, and then you can use that until it goes uh, live, and then and then it's gone. You you know, you can't use it from that point on but if you just get a normal um trial license that gives you a month to try things out uh tyrannosaur i'm at a wedding so i can't chat much <laughs> dude <laughs> or or dude or lady uh i don't know um who you are but i'll call you i'm in california so i can call uh uh even even around here ladies say dude to each other um Anyway, I'm at a wedding, so I can't chat much, but I've been meaning to ask you for a good book recommendation, something about architecture or TDD, perhaps. I'm almost done with a dependency injection book. The dependency injection book is, is terrific. Uh, let me grab that. Yeah, I just grabbed a bunch of uh, random books. Let me let me go change my. No, 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 no. Change my view here for a second, uh, so you can see better. All right, here we go. This is the dependency injection book. Um, this is actually the first inject the first edition of it there's a newer one out that i want to get um uh, and uh this is i i've learned so much from this as i like to say don't be put off by something that doesn't say ios just um there is there is so much out there so so much good stuff um to learn the principles from other programming languages or environments. Getting, it's not too hard to read code in other languages. You can't necessarily write it, but you can usually struggle along and read it. So that's the, that's the dependency injection book. Uh, other books I recommend. Well, there's mine. I don't need to show you that, do I? Um, this <laughs> refactoring for me in my journey this is the book that changed everything uh, i i say that in my blog post about it uh you can go to quality coding and and look up a uh, refactoring book um oh thank you uh Tyrannosaur says, uh, I f finished your book. It was great. I really appreciate that. Refactoring. This book is so good. It is so good. Especially because um, most of the refactorings that it lists are combinations of other refactorings. And when you're dealing with an IDE, that has limited refactorings, and Xcode has much less support for automated refactoring than AppCode does, and that's why I prefer AppCode. But even AppCode doesn't have, for Swift, it doesn't have as much as it has for Objective-C. Uh, but even with something like IntelliJ that has a crap ton of automated refactorings, still, a lot of the things in here are about using those automated ones to make to pull them together to make a bigger one uh so this yeah this is terrific uh last one i'll leave you with is a big fatty this one who is so fat this is like the bible of unit testing unit test patterns 
the thing about this is that like a good um, book on any good book on patterns, no, not any good. Uh, a, a common thing you'll see is that, oh, no, 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 no. Sorry to back up. This one established what code smells were. This one does the same thing, but it says these are test smells. So it's big, it's fat, it's old, it is remarkably still relevant. Every, as I've done TDD, uh, the longer I do TDD, the more I go back to such books and think, wow, if only I'd paid a little more attention when I was reading. All right. There, so there you go. There's the random injection of, of uh, book recommendations for Tyrannosaur. Get back to your wedding. <laughs> but thank you for that question. Oh, and Ani Balsito, thank you for your kind words about my book. All right, so I brought this back. Uh, let's try this again. Let me see if I can do, do this in smaller steps. And my mistake, I think, is that even though I said, let's don't just change this, I just changed it. Well, what if I put down something next to it? This is... This is a pattern that keeps coming up um, from this book um, is to do a refactoring. We want to do a gradual switch over. Put down the, there's an old thing. Put down the new thing, even though nothing is using it yet. So let's do that. We want entries, plural. And it's going to start like that. And this should still pass. Right? Nothing is using it. In fact, I don't even need to run tests. I just need to, um, to build the tests and make sure everything is fine. Okay, so that's fine. So now here, I want to say self entries append the entry. And that should be fine because it's just sticking stuff in, but nothing is using it yet. Actually, just, just for kicks, let me run the test. There we go. And now here's where things get interesting. I should be able to return the first entry. Wait. Let's see if this still works. Cool. And this is the last place that is using entry. Actually, it, it's using it. It's, it's setting it in here. But, but you see what I'm doing? Rather than, um, rather than making breaking changes, and as I went down that road, uh, I got more and more nervous. And that's because I have added that to sort of my, my senses, my spider senses, uh, uh, started to tingle. And when you're new to test driven development, or you haven't done refactoring by moving in very small steps, you're just used to breaking stuff for long periods of time. As you get better at refactoring, we want to narrow, we want to limit the blast radius. Something is going to blow up. We want to make sure that the blast radius from that explosion is super small. In this case, I'm laying down the new thing. So now let's see if, if I can say uh, the problem is the first like that. And I think this will st still pass. When you're refactoring, you're still, um, you're staying in green. So all this refactoring, I can now get rid of this. Uh, not that one, this. And now there should be 
nothing left that's using that. I'll confirm that with find usages. Uh, much easier than going in Xcode to control click and go down. Da, 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 da. I could just hit a key and no. So now I can get rid of that. And the self dot is now unnecessary in, in recent Swift. And it shows, app code shows this in gray. So I can say, remove that. Awesome. This is all refactoring from the existing tests, except for the new one. I, I leaned on the old tests to make this change. And this is an example of um, the famous saying from Kent Beck, uh, in order to make a change, first make the change easy. That's what I'm, I'm doing here. I'm making the change easy by, ch by changing from an optional weighted entry to an array of weighted entry. And then make the easy change. So two steps. So this is another word for this is prefactoring. It's refactoring and preparation for the, for the new thing. So I'm going to check this in. Uh, and this is low risk. And it's a test supported procedural refactoring. So I'm going to say, uh, I didn't mean to change that. Let's let me roll that back. This is a change from single entry to array of entries. Make sense? All right. Now I'll come to a question here from JC Practices. On the topic, do you have any favorite legacy code or refactoring katas besides the gilded rose? I love that one, but would like to practice other kinds of problems. Maybe a kata about test smells would be nice. Ooh. Um, Emily Bache, who's kind of like the, really the curator of the world of so many katas she has, uh, just came out with one about test smells that I haven't, uh, uh tried yet, but I will show you what I've got. If you go to Mio blog. Just go to the blog section here, and there is, I'll post this, my collection of code katas for Swift. A kata is just an exercise. If you watch the Olympics, and if you um, uh, watched uh, karate, you'll see you'll, there were two sections. One was them actually sparring. But the other was them going solo, going through a, a, a set exercise on their own. That's a kata. And this is my collection of things. So this is, uh, I hope, something that you can explore and have fun with. Um, there are refactoring katas. And there are uh, some TDD katas. And there are some legacy code katas. Um, I would start with, uh, you know, some of the refactoring ones, and and if but you're you're already doing uh, Gilded Rose, which is a, you know, a pretty um, it's a simulation of um, how messy late real life code can, gets over time. For those of you who have ne never done the Gilded Rose. Um, that's one I should probably make a video of myself doing. Um, probably the next one I would look at is uh, is trip service. And then if you want 
to really get into some hairy iOS, like what do we do with this? The baby steps timer, uh, the is an is another good legacy code one, and and it's challenging because it has an actual timer and it's doing UI. Trip service is, you know, one of the, one of these uh, generic, um, not not generic, but you know, it has no UI and it's not dealing, it's not making any calls to to Apple uh, stuff. But Baby Steps Timer is an actual functioning app. And so it's got it's got a timer in there. It's got async code, um, and it's it's making uh, updates to the UI. That would be an interesting one to look at. All right, thank you for your question. Okay, so let's see if we can uh, do this now. We now have weighted entries, and now I should be able to bring this test back into play by deleting this skip to disable it. I expect this to fail. So, so we started TDD, uh, we wrote up the failing test, realized that the existing code would not support that change easily, disabled it to go make the change, and... Uh, um, Oh, thank you, JC Practices. Um, hope you find good use out of that one. Uh, make the change that will make the the new test uh, make it easier to write to implement the new test. And the way I did that, I started off wrong. Remember, I told you I'm still learning. Twenty years later, I'm still learning. I started down a path of like just changing it. It's like no, 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 no. I felt so uncomfortable with that. And I listened to my discomfort. Uh, learning to get uncomfortable is such an important thing. Programmers are so tolerant of pain. I want you to become sensitive to pain. I want you to become sensitive to waste. Waste of time, waste of effort. I want you to become sensitive to pain. Anything where it's like, it's not going to build for a while. Keep it green. I laid down the, the, the new thing. I did a gradual cut over of functionality until nothing was calling, nothing remained that was calling the old thing, and then I can remove the old thing. So here we are. We're back to where we started. Two entries. Now let's make this pass. So... We are appending the entries, that's correct, but the problem is we're only looking at the first one. That ain't right. Um, actually, appending might not be correct either. That's not correct. Because I don't want to keep track of all the entries, I, I just want to add them up. I want to accumulate them. Okay, this is getting interesting. I think that this step is actually incorrect. How curious is this? I'm open to suggestions. Again, coming back to the problem. But we want to do the simplest thing that passes. So maybe I, I need to temper my um, my excitement that ooh, uh, you know, I'm I'm my my mind is starting to race down and say this isn't what we want at all. But I need to do the base minimum to make the test green and no more. Hopefully you're hearing, you've seen me flub up with refactoring. You're now hearing this tension of, um, oh, I like keeping track of, of entries is wrong. I need to just accumulate them. Uh, the, the, the scores, the weights. But even that, what I really need to do is 
make this test green in any way I can. And it can be silly. So what if I say, go through the entries Da, 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 da. Okay, rather than getting fancy here, I'm going to write plain old for loop. Because you could probably tell, or, or maybe you were, you were thinking, oh, you just entries and filter um, and, and map and so forth. And... And maybe, maybe you can do that. I like to go with old school loops at first, but if you can jump to jump right into functional programming, oh, good for you. Um, take the entry weight, which is a integer. I don't think this is going to work because I expect there will be uh, another test that fails if I just say, you know what, ignore the problem and just re add them up. But let's try it and see. Yep. One entry with a different problem failed. So that's not good. Um, what I want is to say if uh, the entry... Uh, problems this is starting to look a little bit like this isn't it will this work it might great it passes now here's the thing, you may be looking at this code and saying, yeah, but that's ineffective and it's not functional, but that's not the goal right now. The goal in test-driven development when you have a failing test is to get to green. The code can be used, the code can use literals, the code can use hard coding, um, it can be ugly. As long as it passes, we are good. So let's check this in. This is uh, score multiple problems because the third step of TDD is to do refactoring. Now, do I really want to get the all super functional on this? And I'm not sure, because I'm not even sure this is the right place to score things. The accumulate might, like maybe instead of keeping all the entries, I want and, and, and going through Okay, here's the problem. Rather than um, accumulate, 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 and then every time I score the problem, it's like score, and it runs through the entries and score the like the next uh, point of interest or next problem, and it runs through the entries. This is wasteful. I really want the work to be done here to say add this up. So this is going to be the next problem. So I'll, rather than make this all super functional and beautiful, I'm asking myself, I think I'm implementing this in the wrong way or in a way that I don't like, but that's okay because I have tests to back me up. I can now start to refactor things. So what I 
want is not weighted entries. Let me just sketch this out a little bit. I, it's like I want a dictionary. Um, of problems where this is a string to a value. You see where I'm going here? Um, where the, the problems are keys, and we should be able to go in and say, you know what, update the value for this. So once again, let's uh, actually... I've been going at this for, for an hour-ish now. And this might be a good place to conclude before I start um, getting into the rest of this. Yeah. I think this will be a good place to continue next time. Okay. Um, so, any thoughts, questions? Uh, I I've tried to make my 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 brain clear. I'm an introvert, <laughs> but uh, I've been trying to talk out loud uh, so that you can see inside of my head and especially see when I'm like, mm, I'm not sure if this is right, or I, I start down the wrong path. And here, I, I began to wonder if this might be the solution or a better solution, but right now the tests pass. I don't like it, but the tests pass. Red, green, refactor. We've gone from red, we've gone to green. Let's refactor. All right. Uh, oh, thank you. High production quality. You know, you ought to see my old videos. <laughs> if you go to my YouTube and go back in history, uh, um, yeah, you, you'll see how much uh, my gear and production has improved of late. So thank you so much. Any other questions about test-driven development or anything before we go? Uh, my goal is to do these in, in short segments because who wants to sit around for a long time listening to somebody talk? It's again, it's more fun if you're doing this. So come to PubMob. I'll try to update some things. Oh, that's a question. Um, uh, PubMob isn't free, but you know, maybe I should, I could host a free one. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, but in general, PubMob isn't free because I, I want you to value, um, the thing I'm giving to you, especially as you do the coding instead of me. Um, we've got folks from around the world in here. In terms of like, if you were to spend a 75 minute session with me, so an hour and 15 minutes in which you were doing the coding of a problem, uh, we would go through a very simple kata. Um, and particularly around basically first steps in test-driven development. If, if that sounds interesting to you, um, let me, give me some ideas. It can be here in the chat. You can, um, direct message me on Twitter. My, my, my DMs are open and say, I, I would be interested in a, a PubMob about, um, well, I've got a couple entries um, on PubMob uh, that are outdated. They don't have any anything currently scheduled. Let me, let me find that for you. Put that in the chat. Let's see here. Hang on a second. Going to PubMob. I'll show, show my screen. Go to me. Where's there's my face? Yeah. 
All right. So, so I have a, a couple of different sessions um, that I like to do, but nothing scheduled right now. So if either of these looks interesting, as far as like learning how to do test driven development, and you would be using Xcode because, uh, and unless there was a group of folks who were like, we would like to try app code. Um, don't worry, <laughs> you'd stay in Xcode. Um, give me some ideas about what day of week, what day of the week would you would like and what time of day. Um, my schedule has changed around considerably in the, the, the last month. And so I'm no longer certain if like, doing a pub mob at this time might be good. It seems to work for streaming, but I'm not sure how much interest there is. So anyway, um, let me know what your, what, uh, if these interest you, um, shoot me a note, uh, uh, about when you might be interested, uh, like what time you might be interested in. And I'll, try to schedule something. Other than that, what else was I going to say? Oh, um, anyone who's watching this recording, not live, but uh, the recording of the stream on YouTube, um, you can go over there. Heck, if you're watching this on, on streaming, you can go to YouTube also um, and find my stuff and subscribe there uh, to get not just Twitch uh, uh, recordings, but... Um, other stuff that I that I put out as I put it out, then you'll know when I get it, uh, when when I've put stuff up. All right, it's been a good hour. Thank you so much for your participation and involvement. It's been good to have you, even you lurkers. And I'll see. And I don't know when next time is, but I uh, hope to see you next time.